nobody cares how tough your upbringing was. Nobody cares if you suffered some discrimination. And moreover, you have to remember that whatever you've gone through, it pales in comparison to the hardships previous generations endured and they overcame them. And if they overcame them, you can overcome them, too. You now hail from a lineage and legacy of immeasurably strong men men who bore. tremendous burdens and still laid the stones for the path on which we now walk. You wear the mantle of Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington, and Ralph Bunch and Langston Hughes, and George Washington Carver and Ralph Abernathy and Thurgood Marshall. And, yes, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. These men were many things to many people. and they knew full well the role that racism played in their lives. But when it came to their own accomplishments and sense of purpose, they had no time for excuses. Every one of you have a grandma or an uncle or a parent who's told you that at some point in life. As an African American, you have to work twice as hard as anyone else if you want to get by. I think President Mays put it even better, he said, whatever you do. Strive to do it so well that no man living and no man dead, and no man yet to be born can do it any better. And I promise you, what was needed in DR. Mazes time, that spirit of excellence, and hard work. And dedication and no excuses is needed now more than ever. If you think you can just get over in this economy just because you have a Morehouse degree,
you're in for a rude awakening. But if you stay hungry, if you keep hustling, If you keep on your grind and get other folks to do the same nobody can stop you. And when I talk about pursuing excellence and setting an example. I'm not just talking about in your professional life. One of today's graduates, Frederick Anderson where's Frederick? Frederick. Right here. I know it's raining, but I'm going to tell about Frederick. Frederick started his college career in Ohio. only to find out that his high school sweetheart back in Georgia was pregnant. So he came back and enrolled in Morehouse to be closer to her. Pretty soon, Helping raise a newborn and working night shifts became too much. So he started taking business classes at a technical college instead doing everything. From delivering newspapers to buffing hospital floors to support his family. And then he enrolled at Morehouse a second time. But even with a job, he couldn't keep up with the cost of tuition. So after getting his degree from that technical school, this father of three decided to come back to Morehouse for a third time. As Frederick says, God has a plan for my life, and he's not done with me yet. And today, Frederick is a family man, and a working man, and a Morehouse man. And that's what I'm asking all of you to do, keep setting an example for what it means to be a man. Be the best husband to your wife, or you're your boyfriend, or your partner.
be the best father you can be to your children. Because nothing is more important. I was raised by a heroic single mom, wonderful grandparents made incredible sacrifices for me. And I know there are moms and grandparents here today who did the same thing for all of you. But I sure wish I had had a father who was not only present, but involved. Didn't know my dad. And so my whole life. I've tried to be for Michelle and my girls what my father was not for my mother and me. I want to break that cycle where a father is not at home. Where a father is not helping to raise that son or daughter. I want to be a better father, a better husband, a better man. It's hard work that demands your constant attention and frequent sacrifice. And I promise you, Michelle will tell you I'm not perfect. She's got a long list of my imperfections. Even now, I'm still practicing, I'm still learning. Still getting corrected in terms of how to be a fine husband and a good father. But I will tell you this, everything else is unfulfilled if we fail at family, if we fail at that responsibility. I know that when I am on my deathbed someday, I will not be thinking about any particular legislation I passed. I will not be thinking about a policy I promoted. I will not be thinking about the speech I gave, I will not be thinking the Nobel Prize I received. I will be thinking about that walk I took with my daughters. I'll be thinking about a lazy afternoon with my wife. I'll be thinking about sitting around the dinner table and
seeing them happy and healthy and knowing that they were loved. And I'll be thinking about whether I did right by all of them. So be a good role model, set a good example for that young brother coming up. If you know somebody who's not on point, go back and bring that brother along those who've been left behind. Who haven't had the same opportunities we have they need to hear from you. You've got to be engaged on the barber shops, on the basketball court, at church. Spend time and energy and presence to give people opportunities and a chance. Pull them up, expose them, support their dreams. Don't put them down. We've got to teach them just like what we have to learn. What it means to be a man to serve your city like Maynard Jackson, to shape the culture like Spike Lee, to be like Chester Davenport. One of the first people to integrate the University of Georgia Law School. When he got there, nobody would sit next to him in class. But Chester didn't mind. Later on. He said, it was the thing for me to do. Someone needed to be the first. And today. Chester is here celebrating his 50th reunion. Where is Chester Davenport? He's here. So if you've had role models, fathers, brothers like that thank them today. And if you haven't, commit yourself to being that man to somebody else. And finally, as you do these things, do them not just for yourself. But don't even do them just for the African American community. I want you to set your sights higher.
at the turn of the last century. W.E.B. Dubois spoke about the talented 10th a class of highly educated, socially conscious leaders in the black community. But it's not just the African American community that needs you. The country needs you. The world needs you. As Morehouse men, many of you know what it's like to be an outsider. Know what it's like to be marginalized, know what it's like to feel the sting of discrimination. And that's an experience that a lot of Americans share. Hispanic Americans know that feeling when somebody asks them where they come from or tell them to go back. Gay and lesbian Americans feel it when a stranger passes. Judgment on their parenting skills or the love that they share. Muslim Americans feel it when they're stared at with suspicion because of their faith. Any woman who knows the injustice of earning less pay for doing the same work she knows what it's like to be on the outside looking in. So your experiences give you special insight that today's leaders need. If you tap into that experience, it should endow you with empathy the understanding. of what it's like to walk in somebody else's shoes, to see through their eyes. To know what it's like when you're not born on third base, thinking you hit a triple. It should give you the ability to connect. It should give you a sense of compassion and what it means to overcome barriers. And I will tell you, class of 2013, whatever success I have achieved. Whatever positions of leadership I have held have depended less on Ivy League degrees or SAT scores or GPAs.
and have instead been due to that sense of connection and empathy the special obligation I felt. As a black man like you, to help those who need it most, people who didn't have the opportunities that I had because there but for the grace of God, go I I might have been in their shoes. I might have been in prison. I might have been unemployed. I might. not have been able to support a family. And that motivates me. So it's up to you to widen your circle of concern to care about justice for everybody, white, black and brown. Everybody. Not just in your own community, but also across this country and around the world. To make sure everyone has a voice, and everybody gets a seat at the table, that everybody. No matter what you look like or where you come from, what your last name is it doesn't matter. Everybody gets a chance to walk through those doors of opportunity if they are willing to work hard enough. When Leland Shelton was four years old where's Leland? Stand up, Leland. When Leland Shelton was four years old. Social services took him away from his mama, put him in the care of his grandparents. By age 14, he was in the foster care system. Three years after that, Leland enrolled in Morehouse. And today he is graduating Phi Beta Kappa on his way to Harvard Law School. But he's not. Stopping there. As a member of the National Foster Care Youth and Alumni Policy Council. He plans to use his law degree to make sure kids like him don't fall through the cracks.
and it won't matter whether they're black kids or brown kids or white kids or Native American kids. Because he'll understand what they're going through. And he'll be fighting. For them. He'll be in their corner. That's leadership. That's a Morehouse man right there. <laughs>